For parents like myself, advocating for a child that has a learning difficulty or a disability, an annual review is a perfect opportunity to engage in conversations about your child's progress. Or perhaps it's a long-awaited meeting with a consultant or a therapist or a paediatrician where information about your child's individual needs is essentially needed. The goal of these meetings is to identify areas where value can be added to support your child's education and development along the way. But what happens when you don't know what to expect, you don't know how others would respond or what they would say if you were to complain and how things will turn out if you were to be challenged. So how do you tend to these thoughts, especially when your child has been struggling for a while or perhaps there's been a change in their individual need that requires some focus and attention? It can leave you with that feeling of either excitement or doubt. But one thing is for sure, you don't want anything getting in the way for achieving preferable outcomes towards your child's progress. That's why I want to talk about triggers, whether that's how to avoid triggers or whether that's how to express yourself in a non-triggering way. My name is Brenda and I'm a parent mentor and a fellow parent. I support parents raising children with individual needs and differences to stay empowered whilst they navigate through procedural challenges. And over the years, I've advocated for my son's individual needs of autism and ADHD and other medical conditions to be recognised within his education and his development. In this video, I want to talk about how to approach going to an annual review in a way that you leave feeling content. Content in knowing that you are very pleased with how it went. Feeling triggered puts you in a disempowered state. And as humans, we are wired to respond to triggers so that we're aware of how to keep ourselves safe as well as those that we care for. However, it's how and why we respond that makes the impact especially when we will respond in a way that we don't necessarily want things to go. Triggers are different for different people. The triggers that I've identified that trigger me are when perhaps I've had an informal conversation before an annual review about why reasonable adjustments couldn't be put in place for my son. I've also had the experience of external factors indicating why things are just the way that they are. There's been times when I've had to uphold my options and this has had an impact where it's ruffled the feathers of other people around the table and my options and my choices have been deemed as unreasonable. Those past experiences are triggers that I would be aware of that would have happened prior to the annual review and I would take those triggers into the meeting. What I've learned is knowing how to avoid these triggers where my mind is not flooded with thoughts of what if, why not, how comes so that I'm able to feel focused and present during the meeting and just knowing how to express myself in a non-triggering way and that is essential. It's essential that I do that so that I know how to filter out what I want to say, such as, I hear what you are sharing, however, I also want to share, or how are we gonna do this? Which brings me to how do we approach this? What I find helps is reflecting on these four approaches. And the first thing is knowing your why. And for each family, that is individual to their values. But for most, it's about, I want to be heard. I want to seek information. I want to represent my child. And it's not that we're here to be that problematic parent or that we want to escalate conflict. And the second thing is to practice what you preach. For example, we don't want to mirror what's going on. Perhaps the professionals are feeling uncertain about what will happen or how it will happen, but it doesn't mean that we have to be, as parents, uncertain about the situation. Showing up in a way as you mean to go on is really important, especially in terms of managing the whole process and feeling content along the way. And the third thing is being prepared. Being prepared can look different for different people. Now, it could be having all your notes and files ready and available so that you know what to discuss, or it could be having someone with you, perhaps an advocate or consultant, so that you're able to bounce information off or be able to come together to collaborate in the meeting. And the fourth thing is affirmations. Affirmations is not for everyone. It's basically building a positive attitude. An affirmation that I like to use is, our lives are decided here and now. And for me, this works because it allows myself to be present and grounded when I'm in that meeting. It makes me feel less likely to be distracted by comments or all the other things that are going on and just grounded in knowing why I am here in the here and now. 
Considering these points that I've just raised allows us to consider where we are and where we would like to go. You don't want to not have a leg to stand on when you're in those meetings. So when you leave that meeting, you know that you showed up in a way that aligned with your values and how you wish to show up. So if you are experiencing nuances that have you feeling uncertain, why not take a look at some of my other videos or even consider subscribing because I'm here to provide some insight about our shared experiences as we navigate through procedural challenges as parents advocating for our young people with individual needs. So for now, keep doing what you're doing, stay empowered, stay focused and keep creating progress. Thank you for listening.